Hey guys, I am Perry Nemroff, and welcome back to Collider Best of the Week, the place to go if you don't have enough time to watch all the videos that go up on the Collider Videos YouTube channel, or to read all the articles that go up on Collider.com, and you want to see some of the best of the best right in one spot. And first off, as always, we're going over to Movie Talk. This week on the show, we covered the story that Ben Affleck revealed that the title for his upcoming Batman solo movie is probably going to be The Batman. Do we like it? Will it stick? Let's check out what the panel thought. It has the connotation of it of that really awesome 90s era of Batman comics that were just so awesome. Um, and it's it's that word I use every once in a while, the tangibilization. It's like, oh yeah, Affleck's actually talking about the Batman movie. He's talking about his title. He's talking about the script. This, to me, I think would be the perfect title. I don't, personally, look, titles are titles. They don't make the movie any better or any worse. So who cares, really? But I personally didn't want... Batman v Deathstroke. Do you think that given the fact that we're getting other movies before, like that's why they're leaving the door open now? Like he's saying the Batman now, but once they hash out other things that are happening within the DCEU, we might get the colon and then something else? I think that if that's the plan, I feel like if the fan reception is so positive, it could have been just a placeholder. Like we'll call it the Batman and then other things are coming. And then everyone's like, the Batman's rad. And if everyone loves it, they'll be like, yeah, it's the Batman, I guess. Or, like, or it could be a, a situation. Now remember, there. I don't know if you guys remember this, but when Batman was, uh, Ben Affleck was announced as Batman, there was, you may not remember it, you had to be really tuned into social media to hear it, but there was a little bit of backlash. There was a little bit. <laughs> there was a, little, just a, a little bit of backlash. Maybe this is one of those things where we like the Batman, how do we think the audience will respond to it? That's a great point. I think that they're absolutely, you throw it out there, you see, because it's very, you're bringing up social media, as are you. I think you see it out there, you hear all of it, shows like this, fans are tweeting it out. I think it's going to stick with the Batman, because I think it's going to get a pretty positive. Because it, it is, I saw someone in the chat room go, oh, all fuss over just the word the. Yes. It, it changes it significantly. Yeah, the connotation is different, but I think Perry's absolutely right too. It's very smart for them at the same time to leave that door open. Be a little, you don't have to have your title in stone this far out. Leave the door open a little bit, see how everything evolves with the other movies. So if a better title comes along, presents itself after watching the new movies on screen, change it if you think it's gonna be better, but it's, it's hard to imagine it being better than that. This week for Heroes, we are going to highlight the sweaty question of the week. A viewer asked the panel what villain they hope would pop up in the DCEU. Let's check out who everyone picked. Not a villain, but like the, the like questionably good or evil character that I really want to see is Catwoman. Because uh, from my point of view, we haven't had a live action Catwoman done to my satisfaction. Mm -hmm. So I would really love to see her. And I would love to see them really play on like the relationship that you see with Batman and Hush. The idea that they really need each other because they always just want to make her a villain because that's the obvious thing to do. Um, and I think you can have a really dynamic storytelling there that we're seeing more of in the DC films. They're really going like quite deep into character. Whether or not people like that is your opinion. And I think that would be a great way to introduce her into the larger cinematic universe. Nice. What about you, Robert? Well, you know, I again, <laughs> I can't stop and not think New Teen Titans villains because that's where Deathstroke, I first encountered Deathstroke. I love Brother Blood. I knew you were going to say Brother Blood. I love <laughs> Brother Blood. Yeah. I love Mother Mayhem. I love cults. Cults are great villains. Batman you know? the yeah. cult. I mean, yeah, and I would love that. Was That was great. I mean, that was Jim Starlin, I think. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I don't know how you would work that into a movie. I just can't see Superman or Batman taking on Brother Blood, although I like Brother Blood. One I really want to see that I think we will see just the way that Just League is going is I want to see Orion, the son of Darkseid, with his oh, like little, yeah. with his little motorbike and, 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 his, and his weird sort of Magneto helmet and, and, and just like, they introduced like a new design of him in the New 52 Cliff Chang Wonder Woman and they made this awesome action figure and he looks great and he's, yeah. Um, if you don't know anything about Orion, there's a great Walt Simonson series. There's also the original Jack Kirby series. Go check it out. I hope he shows up in a movie somewhere. I think he will. This week on Jedi Council, we had a really big story to discuss. News broke that they're testing for the female lead for the upcoming Han Solo spinoff movie. And the names in the running are Tessa Thompson, Zoe Kravitz, and Naomi Scott. Let's check out what the council thought about that. If you would have told me that it was Zoe Kravitz and Tessa Thompson that were the only two up for the role, then I would say, it's got a good chance. Naomi Scott throws it off for me because Sana is a, a, a black character. So, and Naomi Scott is, I believe she's of, I don't know what kind of Indian, she's of Indian descent, but she's not, I don't know, Native American. I'm not sure exactly what she is, but I don't think she is black. You're looking what? at me like I had the answer. I think well, I told do, you she was British. <laughs> you, do, yeah, well, you do all the news, I, but she is British, but I just don't, I'm not sure. So anyway, but, Unless they're going to go a different direction with the character and then they're going to say, okay, maybe she is, but I don't think she is. Now, do I think she is the love interest? They are reading for the love interest? Yes. 
I completely reject the notion that she's uh, sauna, yeah, Sansa, Sansa, whatever we're gonna yeah. call her at this point. I completely reject it. Look, the notion that it's a black girl. There was a black girl once in a comic book. Right. Must be the same person. I, I reject that 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 form of logic or that form of thinking. Obviously, if you came up to me and you're like, who would you want to see in a Star Wars movie? At this point, who wouldn't pick Tessa Thompson, given the kind of movie she's made? And she's got the most robust uh, resume of all of them. Naomi Scott, she's coming out in Power Rangers, so we'll see what she's capable of there. The other two credits to her name were The 33 and The Martian. I've seen both of them. I don't remember her in them. No. And then let's not underestimate Zoe Kravitz, because... Even though Zoe Kravitz doesn't have a creed, she's not coming out in Thor and Westworld, she's a pretty damn good actress. Over on Collider Nightmares, we talked about news that a Purge TV series might be in the works. This news comes from director James DeMonico himself. Let's check out what the crew's thought. The Purge is such a great idea. Now, I love the first movie. I know I'm in the minority there, but I think that what we've seen over the last three films are you know, I just always want to see more. I want to see different stories. I want a different world every single time. That's my hope for it, because exactly what James said, there's so much potential here um, to to tell compelling and stories and really get to the bottom of what horror really is. Why mm -hmm. is it scary? Well, it's the people you know that turn on you. Mm -hmm. That's what's scary. I could see it on Netflix uh, as, a, as a really hardcore horror kind of feel to it. I could see it at HBO. Um, I, 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 I think it should avoid your Fox or your ABCs or your CBS. I don't think it. that's the place for it. I see FX, AMC. Um, it's very, very exciting. Getting in the head, you're in a small rural town and you're dealing with domestic violence within, within a family and what happens on the one night of the year that you can do this. That is fascinating to me. So I am, I am so on board with this. Given the direction they're going with, with anarchy and purge election year, and how successful those movies are, it is becoming less and less about like a human story on Purge Night, and it's much more so about crazy Halloween costumes yeah. and yeah. that damn candy bar girl who drives me off my you mind. You and that candy bar girl yeah. every day. I'm telling you, when you see the Purge election year, <laughs> let's, sorry, talk, let's yeah. talk candy bar girl, <laughs> she's the worst. But it's just become more about showiness and less about substance humanity yeah. and substance and all that so i just wonder if this would even appeal to the purge fans that have made this franchise so much money over the years this week on the top 10 show roca and nost are talking top 10 american war films and right now we're going to highlight their conversation on saving private ryan I saw this right when, I think right when I was coming out of uh, the military, like I had just finished my eight years. So I was still in my mind, knee deep in the culture in my mind. So oh, when yeah. I saw that opening, that's what people talk about who had been through, like I had been friends with people who had been through the Iraq war and you meet veterans when you're in the service, like they set up things for you to go meet veterans and they talk about their stories. What they described at the op is what I saw in the opening of this film, which is why, I mean, I burst into tears. Like I didn't burst, but like I was crying because it's so moving. Man, it it's so powerful and overwhelming. And you don't even know anybody other than Tom Hanks by by because he's popular. But you don't really know any of these people, but you're watching them struggle with trying to stay alive in the first 25 minutes of this movie. And you're just like, this is this feels overwhelming and hopeless, but when, you still have to do it. When the guy's walking around with his arm? Yeah, just looking around, just, like where's the rest of his And he's in that know. haze and there's that high ring. Yeah. Like the E in the so background well done. just looking around it's like the, that guy is so out of the moment. He's just like, I don't understand. My yeah. his brain had cracked. Yeah, and he's just holding on to. Let me just try. And I'm sure there was a moment within that person if that did happen. Yeah, where he just, like just tried to put it back on. Yeah, just thinking it's like an action figure from the '80s. You can just snap the arm off and snap yeah. it right back on. Well, it's great, and it's great work from all these young actors. You have to, you have Vin Diesel. You have uh, uh, Giovanni Jeremy, Ribisi. right? Jeremy Davies. You have all um, these guys in here. Uh, Adam Goldberg. I say the guy that was like the Jewish hammer or whatever. Yeah, but he's yeah, dazed yeah. And confused. Yeah, but his his moment with the 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 Juden with the knife, yeah. like all of this, so powerful. There's so like many no, powerful no, moments. No, no, yeah. no, and just as it's slow. Holy yeah. plunges, like, oh my God. Moving on over to the interview section of the show, we're going to highlight Steve's interviews for the upcoming movie, Birth of a Nation. First up, Army Hammer's thoughts on what he knew about this story prior to joining the movie. Absolutely none. I knew nothing. I knew, I knew none of the events. I knew, I read the script and I thought, this is the craziest story I've ever heard. This can't be true. And then I did a little bit of research and found out that it was true and then thought, 
Why did I not learn this in high school? I took U.S. history in high school. I'm sure you did too. Did you hear about this in high school? I don't remember it. I mean, I don't remember a lot from high school, but I, I, I thought I would remember this at least, and it just wasn't something that we discussed or brought up, which seemed sort of criminally negligent to me. So then talking to Nate and hearing how this isn't really taught to anybody, it seemed like that's just a shit. This is, this is a page out of American history. This is a group of people rebelling against a sort of like tyrannical oppression, this one being systemic, but this is exactly what our country was founded on. Yet this is not something that we talk about because it's a dangerous idea, you know? And now let's move on over to Gabrielle Union talking about how she taught herself about this material when she was growing up. We, we both uh, had, had parents that um, recognized that the American school system, school system was a little lacking in the African American history department and world history department and supplemented our education as younger people. Me, my parents in high school, uh, yours were just out of, you know, just out of high school. Mm -hmm. um, and it started with the oral history. My, and both of our parents yeah. encouraged us to do the research ourselves. Um, and since I was a high school, and what, one of the things that my mom noticed was in the face of adversity, I said nothing, and it infuriated her. And mm. she needed. She was trying to give me inspiration of people who stood up, you know, um, mm. in a way that was very effective. And uh, you know, there's obviously the Martin Luther Kings and the and and Rosa Rosa Parks and Malcolm X. But my mom is like, you need to understand even further back, you know, all of the the these slave uprisings. And she but she singled out Nate Park, uh, Nate uh, Nat Turner, and. It's been incredibly powerful for all of the activism that I've done uh, in my adult life, even before Hollywood. It was a big week for HBO. They premiered the very first episode of the new show, Westworld. The gang over on TV Talk did a mini review in the show, so we're gonna highlight that here, but if you like what you see there, be sure to check out the full spoiler discussion, which is a separate video on the channel right now. Having gotten spoiled and heard some opinions around the table before we started the show, I believe I will be the voice of reason and the one who says repeatedly, this show is great, you guys can suck it. Whoa, <laughs> to suck it? I didn't say it wasn't great, I'm just saying, Everybody thinks it's going to be the next Game of Thrones, oh, and that's like, no. like yeah. you said in the text. No. It's like comparing One Direction to the Beatles. I love artificial intelligence conversations like, you know, uh, do androids dream of electric sheep? You know, that was basically the uh, birth Blade Runner mm -hmm. and uh, Battlestar Galactica, of course. I, I, I love this. Is my, I mean, this is, this is me. I mean, this is my jam. Wow. And not everything needs to be compared to Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is not the end all be all of all television. It's not even my favorite television show. And people. this is coming from a guy who loves things with rolling hills. I like Game of Thrones, but it's not the no, end all be all. Yeah. This is everything you need. It's science fiction mm -hmm. and it's literal white escapism. It is. I mean, this is like, oh, and, and, and they throw in Tandy Newton just for a little spice because I love oh, Tandy Newton. Man. Ooh, man. Man. And you're going to get some Tandy naked. Tandy, we you're going to get some naked. Tandy Newton. Whoop, whoop. Whoop, whoop. This is a show Mrs. Griffin does not need to watch. Oh. Overall thought, yeah. I liked it. I'm a little confused by some of the casting choices in the show, some yeah. of them, but I, I do really enjoy this a lot. Hmm. Um, I have so many questions, but I'm super intrigued. I love me some James Marsden as well. Heck yeah. Oh my this gosh. Dreaming. Love him guys so much. Dreaming. So I'm, I'm just excited to see where it's going to go. Now let's move over to the Collider.com portion of the show when we get to highlight some of the written features done by the gang over there. First up this week, we're going to kick it off with something from Collider.com comic expert Evan Valentine. In honor of the recent release of Luke Cage on Netflix, he posted a piece titled Luke Cage Villains Explained. So if you want to know more about the characters from the source material, be sure to check that out. Sticking with TV, we're going to move on over to Westworld for a piece from Katie Burt called 17 Questions We Have After Watching the Series Premiere. A good deal of these were on my list, so check out this piece if you want to see Katie's thoughts on any questions you might have. There's also some good discussion going on in the comments section here as well. Now let's switch gears and go to the big screen for a piece on Emily Blunt. She's got Girl on the Train hitting theaters this weekend, so Aubrey Page ranked her 10 best performances, which includes her work in Looper, The Young Victoria, and much more. Next up, it's October, so the dot-com team has a whole bunch of horror features coming your way leading up to Halloween. We're all familiar with the more modern classics, but this piece from Dave Trumbore covers the 20 best horror films from 1900 to 1950, so if you're on the hunt for some black and white or maybe silent options, you're going to want to check this one out. And then Brian Formo takes us into the 1960s for the 18 best horror movies of that decade. As one might expect, there's some Hitchcock on the list, a little Romero, and some Rosemary's Baby too, but there's so much more that might not be on your radar, so that's well worth checking out. 
Now it's time for the Schmodown section of the show. And the first match we're going to highlight is a little Collider Show showdown of sorts. We've got Team Heroes facing off against my Collider Nightmares team, Team Wolves of Steel. Wolves of Steel. They have to add the steel right. to make it sound like they're bringing something to the party. Right. Look, we're heroes. We're not heroes of steel. We're not the woodsmen. We're not whatever. We're just heroes. heroes. That's all we need to triumph. I'm looking at Robert as the... Uh is the wild card in this one. He knows his stuff, but at the same time, he's never played in the tournament or a Schmodown match before, so it'll be interesting. Yeah, the question is, is he gonna freeze under the light? Team Heroes, Robert Meyer Burnett and Big John Schnapp! The Wolves of Steel! Look at this! Oh, they're walking out together. There's Champions. Making their opponents look like a couple of hungry hobos. Well, right, there's look Riley. The, oh, there's the, the signature. The, the signature move by Riley is right there. I like it. This Clark kind of stamp. What's she doing now? You see Clark walk. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, oh, look at that. Very nice. All right, Clark, in the category of drama, who played the wife of Mel Gibson's character in the dramatic thriller Ransom? Renee Russo. Correct. Correct. And Wolves of Steel gets on the board. Robert, under the category of directors. Who was at the helm for the 1995 action thriller, Crimson Tide? Mr. Tony Scott. Ooh, Correct. Look at Burnett. He is two for two. And now let's move on over to the Schmodown tournament where we have Mark Riley facing off against John Rocha. Time has come, has been. The future champ versus the has been. Has been? Has been a champion. Old school versus new school. I'm done with your mouth, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, the outlaw, John Rocha! There he is. Oh, no, an end of place. Oh, wow. He's coming out. Still a couple of moves. He is the former movie trivia champion of the world, Mark Yodi. The mask he wore against me. You're gonna need it. Oh, he can't You're see. gonna need it. Drama. For which branch of service had Michelle Pfeiffer's character served in Dangerous Minds? Branch of service. Five, four, three, two. The Marines. That is correct. correct. Good job, Riley. Wow. Pulls, one out. pulls it out. John Roca, your first question. Under the category of 80s, yes. name the two stars of the 1987 action comedy Stakeout. Oh, Emilio Estevez and Richard Dreyfus. Correct for one point. There you go, Roca on the board. Now it's time for Meme of the Week, the portion of the show when we get to highlight a meme or a piece of artwork that one of you fine viewers have sent in. This week's winner is Justin Heron. I am sorry if I pronounced your last name wrong, but I love your meme, so I guess we're even. This week, we were lucky enough to have Olympic gold medalist and Collider fan Cody Miller come into the studio, and Justin sent in this image, which is just as awesome as Cody is. Do you want your meme or artwork featured right here on Best of the Week? It's super easy. All you gotta do is pick a moment from one of our shows, make a meme or a piece of art about it, and then send it on over to mailbag at collider.com or tweet it at us using the hashtag Collider Best of the Week. Cody, are they straight? Looks like a little. All right, let's do it. At the Collider Video Studios here in Burbank, California, and it's a piratey kind of day. Arr, also here is Christian Harloff. <laughs> <laughs> Post Vegas wearing a pirate hat is like the least that I can yeah. do. Are you kidding me? Hey guys, sorry we're late today. I had a bad bang day. It takes a lot of time to fix these <laughs> things, so this was all my fault. That's why we're late. And be sure to subscribe to the Collider Videos YouTube channel keep up with all the must know TV and movies and fun. And be sure to subscribe. <laughs> For more on Iron Fist and all of the Marvel Netflix shows. What? What was I saying? Did I say something wrong? <laughs> the fifth fan 
the, the fifth fan. <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, come on. Phantasm movie in the franchise. There it is. Uh, that, I would be wearing a pirate hat too if it wouldn't mess up my bangs. <laughs> this thing. <laughs> <laughs> because I love dick truly was like just daggers in my eye. <laughs> Wait, you guys, giggle time. I giggle time. You read it. Giggle time. I'm, I'm Griffin. Griffin's just like. <laughs> Dennis Zen broke his hands in a tragic Twitter accident, made his way all the way out to Japan seeking a mystic in the mountains to find some kind of cure, and he's come back today with some kind of glowing aura around him. I'm not sure what that's all about, but welcome back, Dennis. Yesterday, I tried to open my uh, parking gar garage door. I read this on yes, Facebook. with my power windows on my car. I was like, <laughs> and I was like, open. Why, why isn't wow. the garage opening? All three of them would be very interesting cast against I always mess up his name. Wait, is it because I'm saying I love dick? No, no, not at all. Is it because I said I'm not gonna I'm not gonna take it, I love dick? <laughs> Hi guys, for Collider News, I'm Perry Nemiroff. My wife loves me. She adores me. She really does. But I've never seen a more stark look of disappointment in her eyes <laughs> than after I introduced her to Jason Momoa and he's talking to her and he's charming her to death. And then when her eyes went off him back to me, it was like Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what I love about Patrick Stewart in particular is that he's powerful and he has swords. And he's like, I'm uh, here. Come on, kill that. me. What are you waiting for? Yeah. <laughs> it's batshit crazy, but it's a lot of fun. Nice. Perry nice. said the S word. Oh, no. We did it. You know what's we funny? We did it. I'm the Dominators. The Dominators. I'm I like the Denominators better. <laughs> so, I just, prefer Dominoes myself. Well, because okay, math yeah, for I'm me out. is very Sorry, scary. Dement, the place to go if you don't have enough time to watch all the shows on the Collider Videos YouTube channel or to read all the articles, go that blah, blah, blah. We got, we got, we got some You're background. You're wearing heels. Harloff, yeah, Campia. Yeah. I'm going, I've worn these for every shot. Yeah. Try backing up. <laughs> <laughs> Giggle time. <laughs> You're a little something about whoring yourself out. <laughs> like, like, uh, <laughs> merchandise. <laughs> merchandise, merchandise. By myself, dead center in this room, and I had- And Ta Tyler Perry had... sitting right behind you, breathing on the back of your neck the whole time. <laughs> they size queens. They have a they, yeah, so size does matter in, in, in their civilization. I'm sorry if I pronounce your name. <laughs> I took this one film course once, and the guy on it, uh, apparently Mark Riley just passed out over there. Uh, did he win? I thought he did. Maybe I, I know. I, I, I know for sure. Don't argue with the gold medal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, "What? Mm. <laughs> did you just have a hairball?" A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> this is also the studio that did the ridiculous <laughs> six and the duo. <laughs> Oh, here we go. Size time. does matter. Size does In matter. In every civilization. <laughs> David, Dave. I'm not going there. <laughs> Hashtag I love dick. Slow clap. John Claude Van Johnson, guys. Sorry. So good. Sorry, so to. good. <laughs> Are you guys done? <laughs> And that's a wrap on this week's episode of Collider Best of the Week. You guys know what to do. Please hit the comment section below and share some of your favorite moments from this week's lineup of shows. I'm Perry Nemroff. You can catch me on Twitter and Instagram at pnemroff. Please go on over and bookmark Collider.com. Subscribe to the Collider Videos YouTube channel. Watch and read everything. But just in case you don't have enough time, that's what Best of the Week is for. Have a good weekend, everyone. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.